Give it time. And you can zoom in if you want. You can zoom out. Mm -hmm. and, you know. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Amy Syed, candidate for Ward 19, Trinity Spadina. We're actually standing in the campaign headquarters of my competitor, George, who is uh, also running here in Ward 19, Trinity Spadina. So, section of candidates who have been invisible in the invisible election. We're not fringe candidates, we're mainstream candidates. Uh, we offer an alternative to the electorate. Uh, however, media, mainstream media, may have been paying attention to a perceived front runner or somebody uh, that they recognize from the 20th century. This is a future city council of the 21st century. Um, so I'm going to ask each of the candidates to come up, say their name, their ward, why they feel that they've been invisible during the current campaign, which only has uh, now less than a week to go. And we'll begin with Amrakit, uh, who was actually a City Idol winner. The Rossi but um, uh, eventually we'd like to see transit return there and connect with the existing transit downtown on uh, at the harborfront on uh, Queen's Key uh, downtown and perhaps go by the front door of the uh, exhibition place rather than the back door where it uh, goes in right now. Uh, there's many other issues. Um, I, I've been involved with uh, the just five resident associations. I've been involved with the one that I live in. Uh, we've got a greening project to uh, see people get new uh, front trees on their city paid trees on their uh, front yards uh, because the canopy is diminishing. And when that happens, as trees get older and are removed, uh, it affects uh, things like fresh air and cooling and, uh, and various other attributes that the, the trees uh, bring. Um, also involved with the Wabash uh, Building Center, the only candidate involved with that. In fact, I had, when we had a meeting about the Lamport Stadium, two candidates came up to me before they knew I was a candidate asking me about the Wabash because they had never heard of it before, and yet now they're, they've got it all in their campaign literature and everything. But um, it, it's going to be a community center from a, an old uh, derelict uh, building that um, initially we're just, there's two buildings. We're going to fix the uh, first building as a washroom and small kitchen for the park, and the, and the bigger building, the longer range project, uh, as money comes in. But um, we're not uh, siphoning money from the, the city. It's a community fundraising project. The city has given us the land. Uh, it may contribute some money, but a lot of it will be raised from, most of it will be raised from the community. And, possibly even a, a partner, but uh, long range plans still have to be worked out. There's uh, m many other issues, including the uh, Lamport Stadium. Um, a lot of people would like to see that as uh, being a park and, and, uh, and still have athletic uh, facilities there, but not in what is being done now as a, as a money loser. And perhaps Parkdale Liberty Economic Development Corporation can uh, evolve their mandate to take over that because Parks Department can't handle it right now. And that's why it's deteriorating. Um, there's a lot of other issues as well too. I don't, don't want to take up uh, too much time here, but I, I think though that we really have to get both the large media and the small media to really pay attention to what people have to say. We have uh, probably three truly fringe candidates in 14 um, that don't even come to all candidates meetings. Uh, and yet um, four or five what they call star candidates, uh, um, some of them don't even live in the ward and have had very little to do with the ward and yet uh, are getting this media attention. And, and just to cut something short, uh, this is an example of uh, green architecture and uh, I think uh, my background in architecture and planning that is gathering the thought of what green architecture could be that's in Japan actually. Uh, thanks very much for listening. So I have to say that I, and the sad thing is a lot of the press reads the incumbent's webpage and then they repeat what the incumbent says whether or not it's true. In our writing we have nine candidates running for the position of counselor, which I think is a reflection of the job the counselor is doing. We need representation that listens to people. People in your ward are the experts. If a counselor makes a decision and implements it without consulting with his constituents, he's not doing his job. There's no accountability in City Hall. Um, our counselor has attended 55% of the council meetings, and there's nothing we can do about that. There's no way you can make your counselor go to a meeting. There's no easy way of checking how they voted. So I stand for accountability for 
standing behind my decisions and explaining them, for listening to the people, having a constituency office for the seniors and those who take transit so they can reach me, and for working with the community, with the businesses, the people who live there and the people who work there, for better solutions. I think that's what a councillor should be, an advocate for the community, and that's what I intend to be in Ward 6 of Soko Lakeshore. Thank you. Uh, introduction into the invisible election and hopefully by now uh, the invisible candidates have visibility uh, in your view. Uh, I'd like to call upon George, our host. Uh, we're actually at his campaign headquarters. Me and George, George and I are not running against the incumbent. We're running for the ward and we're running for the ward together. Uh, so George, uh, well, let me say thank you for coming. It's, uh, I love to see the candidates come together and actually participate in an election. It's very difficult for people to get up, put their money where their mouth is, their first their hundred dollars and then their time, their effort to volunteer and try to make a difference in the city. We have a lot of incumbents out there who think they own the city. These people are showing us that no, it's a city for the people, by the people. And I want to say thank you to everybody for come out today. I know that it's an interesting campaign office. We have coffee and food, of course. And I think that's how we should handle all the people of the city, with courtesy, with kindness, and listen to the people for once. And so back to these guys, and please, I want to hear more from uh, Amy as well. Thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, the voters, 58% on the front page headline a week ago said they wish that they could vote for someone other than the incumbent mayor if they only knew who to vote for. They're not happy with them. They're not, uh, they don't like the alternatives and uh, they actually don't like both sides. Well, we found someone who is a subject matter expert. He knows what he's talking about. He knows how City Hall works. And sadly, he has been an invisible mayoral candidate. He is not fringe. He is mainstream. He gets invited to speak all over the world. And in his own backyard, in his own city, he is dismissed. I'd like to call mayoral candidate Rod Muir. Good morning. My name is Rod Muir and I'm running for the Office of Mayor of the City of Toronto. I'm the founder of Waste Diversion Toronto. We're a non-profit whose mandate is to advocate for the uh, diversion of waste from landfill or incineration. And I have to begin today by saying how proud I am to be standing here with such a courageous group of individuals and how inconsistent I find it that this mayor who three years ago campaigned on the issue of transparency and inclusiveness has generated the most number of candidates running to replace incumbents in the history of Toronto. Clearly there's an inconsistency and a disconnect here in terms of what's being said and what's being done. I was reminded recently of Mr. Miller's three priorities in taking office. The, the cancellation of the bridge, the environment, and inclusiveness. And I'd just like to quickly review some of, some of the progress. Yes, we cancelled the bridge. We were told it would be two dollars. It was $35 million out of our pockets, and guess what? The planes are still flying. So I can't say there's much of a job being done here. The fact that this mayor is running on a green in two years that fly in the face of all sustainability. We still have one lousy, lonely windmill down on the lakefront. We still have two postage sized solar panels on City Hall. We're building fences around police stations with three million wood. Three years of non-stop closures of the Michigan border and all Miller can come up with is adding tubs and lids to the blue box. Green, I'd say David's color green is pretty light in my impression. What I'd like to conclude on is the issue of transparency. And this one's been overlooked a lot the past couple of months. Here it's a guy who promised to sweep it. You remember the broom? This is it. I found it in the garbage the other day. Here's David's broom. A fellow who is going to clean out City Hall. I can tell you as an advocate and many of the other people who are advocating for issues of the city will say the same thing. Absolutely nothing has changed. It's as close to shop as it was before. And I'd like to give you a couple of examples. One is the clerk's office. If you're fighting City Hall, your first line of entry is the clerk's office, where you find out about reports, etc., that are going on. This office used to be located on the mezzanine level, right next to the mayor's office. Well, now it's on seek permission to go in 
And what's been replaced is the, the office of pro intent is to further Miller, to make him look good. A absolutely ridiculous. A again, I come back to this. A fellow elected on the issue of transparency, the fact that the, the most number of people are running to replace him and other incumbents in the hit that he's made on this issue. Again, thank you so much for your time and attention, to, and to all these folks for taking their time to, 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 to fight this. Thank you. We're going to wrap up the invisible election today. We presented a slate of candidates from across the city as well as the mayoral candidates. There is a real option and change. You will not be able to vote for another uh, full city council until the year 2010. In six days' time, we may end up with a council for the 21st century to replace the current incumbent council that is drawn from the 20th century. Please visit www.theinvisibleelection.tyo.ca. We'll have uh, links to everyone's website, their policies, and lift the veil of invisibility. Everyone, thank you for coming to Ward 19 from East Vagina, and we look forward to your uh, act of voting and uh, engagement in the civil... Uh, civic duty to elect your next city council. I'm Hemi Syed, Ward 19, Prindy Spadina, in my, com in my competitor's office, headquarters of George uh, also running Ward 19. Thank you.